Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry video where I'm going to help you to prioritise your revision for AQA paper 3. On this paper you can be assessed on any topic across the whole course, so I've done an in-depth exam analysis of all the past papers that there have been and I'm going to tell you which topics come up the most often and which are worth the most marks, tell you any subtopics that come up consistently and are worth more marks than others. If we take a look at how many marks on average each of these topics has been worth across those seven papers, you can see that amount of substance is the most popular question. On average, 7.1 marks out of the 60 marks available on section A, and that makes up 12% of section A. Organic required practical, so that required practical 10, nearly 10% 10 of the marks available across those seven papers, and transition metals, the same amount. And you can see that as we work our way down, there's a quite a significant drop off between acids and bases and thermodynamics in terms of the topics that they seem to assess the most. And so those seven at the top part of this table, they seem to stand out. You can see from this graph here that whilst you could be assessed on any topic at all, there are some topics they prefer to ask you about more than others. And in first position across all of the seven papers that there have been, you can see there is the amount of substance topic. At the bottom of the graph, we've got 2017 as this medium shade of blue. Then we've got 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 as this dark blue at the top. So amount of substance comes up on every single paper and is worth the most marks overall across those seven papers. And then not too far behind that, we've got joint second place really from the looks of it, which is the required practical 10, the preparation of the organic liquid and the organic solid. And then we've got transition metals. You can see from this that the organic required practical has come up four times worth a lot of marks each time, whereas transition metals comes up slightly more frequently, but is sometimes worth with fewer marks than others. And then in fourth and fifth comes rate equations and energetics. There are required practicals in both of those topics, and in fact required practicals in all of the topics that make up the top seven in this ranking. So clearly revising the required practicals is going to be important because paper three is a slightly more practical heavy paper than some of the others. Outside of that top seven, all of the other topics are pretty similar in terms of how many marks are available for the content of that topic, even pretty similar for how often they actually come up. And so instead of looking at the actual full topics, I'm now going to drill down into the subtopics and explore them in greater depth. There are some topics that are assessed more frequently than others. There have been seven paper three exams between 2017 and 2023, and calorimetry and electrochemical series have actually been assessed five times out of those seven. And there are five subtopics that have actually been assessed four times, and they are, as already mentioned, required practical 10. And then we see our first two amounts of substance subtopics, percentage yield and percentage uncertainty, and then the transition metals ligand substitution and buffers from the acids and bases topic. And you can see chromatography and colour come up three times out of those seven. When they do come up, some subtopics are worth more marks than others. Required practical 10 is consistently one of the biggest topics on the paper when it actually comes up. All four of those times it's been assessed, it's been in the top three most important questions on the paper. And then quite some way behind that come three subtopics, the calorimetry required practical, nucleophilic addition as a mechanism, and the electrochemical cells. They have been in the top three twice on those seven papers. Looking in greater depth at which subtopics are worth the most marks across those seven papers, the required practical 10 comes in firmly in first position. There's been a total of 40 marks for that subtopic across the seven papers. That is on average six marks out of 60 per paper. Calorimetry is a distant second with 3.7 marks out of 60 per paper. And then the electrochemical cells comes in in third place with three marks per paper, 21 
one marks across those seven papers. You can see that there are other subtopics that are higher er value than others, but not as high as those top three. So in terms of choosing which ones to prioritise, that top three looks like a good bet. Across all of A-level chemistry, amount of substance is the topic that carries the most marks. And that paper three is no exception to this. But within paper three, there are definitely some subtopics within the amount of substance section that are favoured more than others. Percentage yield is the most popular. Usually that's tied to an organic synthesis or an organic required practical and percentage yield is woven in towards the end of that. In a similar way, percentage uncertainty can be asked about in any required practical. So that means that that's asked about frequently, not loads of marks when it comes up, but it will come up very consistently. Making up a volumetric solution, that required practical itself has come up a couple of times and been been worth quite a lot of marks when it does. And then in fourth and fifth, we've got moles and limiting factor and the titration analysis. So there are five subtopics that come up with greater frequency on paper three than others. Hopefully that's given you some ideas about the topics that you should prioritise when your paper three exam is getting closer. Clearly you ought to revise everything, but it is smart when you're not too far from the exam to prioritise particular topics and even subtopics, because obviously time is going to be limited. It's worth also saying that the topics that don't come up on paper one and paper two are also more likely to appear on paper three particularly if this missing topic has some significant practical element to it because paper three likes practical work so much. So that's worth keeping in mind after we've done paper one and paper two to help you prepare for paper three. And I'll release a YouTube video about my thoughts about paper one and paper two after they've both happened on the 18th of June. Okay, good luck everybody.